Oh, oh, <laughs> I don't know. was angry the word? I mean, look, it was, I think it might have been a day that we had maybe, maybe eight cases, eight or nine, if, if it's my, my recollection is correct. And uh, of course, we weren't happy, you know, New Zealand's bar, the bar we'd set ourselves was very high. Um, so of course, we weren't happy with that, but to be described in that way um, uh, was a was a misrepresentation of New Zealand's position. <laughs> yeah. We had a plan to communicate it and say this is where we need to sit. Yeah, even though these were decisions that, of course, you know, no one had ever taken before. We'd not had these circumstances before. Uh, there was a lot that was unknown, uh, but the only questions for me really were about, you know, different um, exclusions and things like that. Those were the things that we gave ourselves a bit of time to debate. The idea that we needed to go into a, a full lockdown, uh, that, was, that was clear. I, I didn't question that at all. Okay. The only two debates for a, for a time were those countries that, that were contemplating herd immunity and those countries that were talking about squashing the curve. And, and that flattening the curve is all based around trying to ensure that your, uh, country, your, your every country's health system could cope with whatever onslaught that they might see. And originally that's what we, we, we started because uh, there just simply wasn't really much of a view that elimination was possible. You know, not too many countries were talking about that. I remember my chief science advisor bringing me a graph that showed me what flattening the curve looked like for New Zealand and where our hospital and health capacity was. And the curve wasn't sitting under that line. So we knew that flattening the curve wasn't sufficient for us. Have and, and then still misfire. Did you worry that it was an impossible goal? Well, the, the, I guess with everything there was a counterfactual. You know, either you set this goal and uh, you don't achieve it, but in the process you certainly are reducing the number of lives lost. Um, the alternative is to set a lesser goal have and, and then still misfire. Um, so the counterfactual was always there in the back of everyone's minds. There was this pandemic and it was all a matter of degrees as to how successful we'd be in trying to control it. We were heading to a line. Okay, and we thought we were through the worst of it. And so it was a real psychological blow for people and I felt that too. So it was, it was yeah, it was very, very tough. And also it was possibly, you know, we'd done some scenario planning around different eventualities just to make sure that we were prepared for possible resurgence. Uh, it was about the worst that you could even possibly imagine. The fact that it was, you know, in, um, uh, in a highly concentrated population, uh, that it was spread across multiple groups that we had English as second language issues in amongst it. We had large scale gatherings through churches. Um, we had uh, um, part of a population that is highly affected by COVID. It was the worst you could possibly plan for. And when I'm in the middle of uh, something that needs to be resolved, that's almost the time when I spend the least amount of time thinking that way because you just have to get on with it. There's a job to be done. Uh, and I've never doubted, you know, any, any self-doubt I ever have just as a human being doesn't mean that it always translates into doubt around what needs to be done. Our job uh, when we're in these roles is to make sure we build good relationships with everyone. That's, that's our job. Uh, but there's no question that when some of your ideas and values are similar, it's, that's an easier job to do. Uh, and so that's, that's the basis I think I which we'll be building that relationship with, with the new president. You know, I, I think that our relationship has evolved over a number of years, and even in recent times, you know, it is we've we've got one of the the you know a very long-standing diplomatic relationship. We also have a very long-standing trading relationship. But my personal view is that we're at a point where we can raise issues. We're fairly predictable. 
in the fact that we do, and I think that's an important part of our independent foreign policy. There's a psychology to that, that I think unless New Zealanders come to terms with the fact that this has been a repeat behaviour by, by us for decades, but is particularly bad in this period of time, we won't figure out how to move people back into other parts of the economy instead of just constantly looking to housing. So that's some of the things we're thinking about because we know we need to pull some levers to try and, to try and even out the playing field. Sorry, just Christmas plans, holiday plans? Nothing. <laughs> I'm doing nothing. I will be by the sea though. Yep, it'll be great. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, appreciate it. Hey, thanks a lot. I'll be seeing you shortly. Exactly.